Welcome back to uh, Melee on Lockdown with me, Mr. Cofton. Uh, we are still in quarantine. Now, day, month, whatever it is, mid May. Um, and I've talked about in this particular series how to train melee on your own, how to train melee with two people, how to train melee with three people. Now, in the um, fine traditions of troll math, we're going to talk about training melee with lots of people. Um, at some point, we might get back to like full size practices. We might get back to, you know, actually having five on fives and wars. And I figured I'd offer some advice on how to train up your local unit or your regional unit or your kingdom unit to be, um, to be more effective, basically. How to train your unit um, once we get back to normal existence, if we ever do. So, um, first thing to do, and this is actually something you can do outside of practice uh, if, if your local practice just doesn't want to do melee, um, cross-training uh, in team sports. Um, so, you know, at your local practice, you can play ultimate frisbee or soccer to warm up. Uh, we've done that in the past. Um, or if your local practice is too small, uh, you know, you do either the one or two, the one, two, three person melee training that I've talked about, uh, but you want to get some more um, large melee-esque training in, find your local intramural uh, team sport league uh, go out and, and join that and have fun there too. Uh, soccer ultimate are of course the obvious first ones. Um, you know, if you're feeling really brave, try rugby or Gaelic football, um, because you might get that in your local area. Uh, there's a Hurley league somewhere around here too. Um, but basically anything that trains up your ability to move quickly, um, in, in high, high information situations um, and and coordinate with others and read the movement of multiple people on the field. All of that is going to be and, and build up your own field awareness. All of that is going to be useful. You can do that as at your local melee practice. Um, I kicked off a kingdom melee training event recently with soccer um, or you can just go do that on your own. Seek it out on your own. Because melee is a team sport. We have our five on fives. They are teams. Um, and if you feel like you must justify your team sport training by having sharp objects, uh, you can uh, do um, a thing that we did with the, the soccer training at the local, right, at the kingdom training event that I ran. Um, everybody gets a dagger. And the only person who can be attacked is the person who has the ball. So we played soccer, normal soccer, and then we added in daggers, and that added an extra element of, you know, if you had the ball, people started coming at you, trying to kill you, and, you know, if you died, you surrendered the ball, and you went back and rezzed. And if you, um, you know, but it gave you uh, the opportunity to stay alive, and it gave you incentive to pass. So it gave you incentive to be more aware of where your team was, where their team was. Um disincentivized grandstanding or, or hot dogging. So that's the first thing that you can do. Um, second thing, and, and I remembered this recently and should have discussed it um, probably back in the three person, but you know, it, it helps if you have more than three people at your practice for this. Um, we called it the gauntlet. Now in a line fight, a line fight is not a series of one-on-ones. Uh, I've heard people say that. I've heard uh, some kingdoms say that, you know, their melee war practice event is going to just be training one-on-one -on -one because uh, rapier, is, rapier melee is just one-on-ones, and it's not. Um, but skirmishing is. <laughs> and, you know, if, you, if you've watched the other videos, you've watched the whole, like, running around on the flank to get a one-on-one -on -one situation. And really what you're trying to create in skirmishing, in your, your high agility, is... Uh, a, where you have a one-on-one -on -one or where your own team has a two-on-one. 
the um, 10 second drill I talked about previously works the two on one. So let's talk about working that one on one in a high intensity situation. Um, if you're just doing, you know, one on one practice, you, you know, like like tournament sparring, that's not going to train melee esque fighting. So what we do, what we've done, is set up um, what we call the gauntlet, and our fighter would start here and attack uh, the first person. Fight, 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 fight. Um, whatever the outcome of this fight, move on to the next one and fight here. And whatever the outcome of this fight, move on to the next one. This person turns around and starts down the gauntlet, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, this person's over here and they join the end of the line and this person's working through the gauntlet. So it's high intensity, high tempo. Everybody was, you know, fighting, fighting, fighting. Um, and it, it worked that series of, you know, if you've come around on a flank and you get your magical one-on-one, -on -one, boom, you kill this person. You're immediately into another one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and, and that is one of the, and, and, and so this trains high speed, high tempo, um, quick kills, quick outcome, and uh, a little bit of, a little, little bit of awareness because you have to be, as you're fighting this, aware of where this person is and kind of thinking forward to what you're going to do against them. So, you know, ah, oh, you killed this person. You know, how are they set up? Are you going to jump sideways? Are you going to, you know, how are you going to take care of this person as soon as this person is taken care of? Um, so it works that thinking forward piece. Um, now, sometimes melee is a line fight. So let's talk through training a line fight. Uh, and this is a situation where it really helps if you have um, more than three people, more than four people. Now, um, I have the best scholar in the world because I've been doing these videos with kids' toys, dinosaurs, and, and sea creatures. And yesterday I got a package from Amazon with a note in it that said, if you're going to be doing videos about melee, maybe you should have people with swords. So now I have like a dozen pirate toys to use for this. Um, and they're a little harder to see here, but eh, we're going to use them anyway. Well, assuming they stand up. <laughs> maybe they don't stand up on this carpet. Uh, but yeah, now I have my, my melee training tokens for the rest of my ever need, uh, of, of however long I should need them. If I can just keep them away from the baby who won't eat them. Okay, so there's our, our pirate army for right now. And we have pirates, for, pirates versus Dinosaurs, which might just be the most awesome movie title ever. And uh, we need to call up Asylum Pictures and make them do it. Um, another aside. You might notice that there are these two new dinosaurs here. They're not actually new additions uh, to the family. They have been in my car for years um, because, uh, and yes, I know one of the dinosaurs is wrong, but sometimes at stoplights, this land is a fertile land. We shall call it this land. I think we should call it your grave. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. But yeah, I need a stegosaurus instead. I just haven't ever bothered to go get one. Um, but yeah, I remember that those are out in my car, and I'm not using my car these days. Uh, there are cobwebs on the steering wheel, so I brought them inside, and, you know, the baby boy can play with them now, since I've been playing with his toys. So, this next one, we've talked about cross-training. We've talked about um, the gauntlet. Next one is a line training drill, and this is, uh, we call this the zipper drill. There is a concept of zippering the line um, as an action in melee. This is not quite that. Um, and zippering the line and, and the way people use that is wrong. It's stupid. This is, um, it, it works that line fighting engagement and then uh, it works that, that instantaneous reaction to something happening. Um, and the way it works is these two fighters are fighting, right? everybody's fighting, but it's really just the dinky dinky stay alive fighting. Just stay alive, just stay alive, nobody die. Just stay alive. It works. Wistrick's first rule, stay alive. Wistrick's second rule, keep the person next to you alive. Um, and then this person does something intentionally stupid. They lunge at the person across from them. 
in that moment, green reaches out and hits them. Since green is now overextended and, and exposed, blue reaches out and hits green and it zippers. Boom, 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 boom. Theoretically, at the end of the day, this person's the only one left standing. And that's why it's the zipper drill. Um, you start randomizing it. Uh, whoever is, is kind of leading this training exercise stays out and they need to identify um, the person who's going to lunge. And uh, that's a little difficult to do. So usually what I do if I'm that person, if I'm the person running the training, um, I walk over here and I point at the person over here who's going to lunge. Uh, this way, this side doesn't know. This person knows. And when I point, they lunge. Right? That is like the lunge. Right. And it doesn't just start down here. Um, and once you've figured out, once everybody's gotten used to that idea, you then start randomizing it. T-Rex here, lunges out. These two pirates hit T-Rex. Uh, and then zipper, 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 zipper. Um, because if one of your opponents should do something stupid, like overextend themselves, their entire line should suffer for it. And then you start training. How do I lunge out safely? You know, not get hit. I want to make that sh touch, but not get hit. Um, and so that's the zipper drill. You start running it. Um, and, and then you start saying, okay, we're going to process this further. Um, you get hit, you step out, you know, eventually you'll find that people get hit and, and that the person who landed the shot doesn't die. Um, and, and you want to keep working that you want to keep training that and training that away. So, um, you know, this person gets hit, they step out, count to three and step back in. And now you've got just a continuous line fight with, um, our, our trainer walking around behind it, pointing at somebody to say, lunge, lunge. Okay, great. And you can keep that going for as long as you need. So that's the first three drills um, that you can do with a large group that I find to be useful. Cross training, soccer, ultimate frisbee, whatever. Um, do the gauntlet and do the zipper drill. I'm going to make a second video that's going to be the other three drills that I have on my list. Okay, and talk to you later.